Welcome back guys. You're watching High Voltage Mayhem and today I got a cool video for you. I'm going to bring you part two of this fire truck video and as a matter of fact this apparatus behind me is back into service now. So I've gotten everything working on this apparatus and it is ready to go fight fire at a moment's notice. So while nothing's going on I'll show you a little bit about the pump panel and a little bit about the apparatus and you can take a complete walk through this thing and check it out. So got all new hoses, got all new fittings and equipment, new task force nozzles, all kinds of cool stuff. So without further ado, let's check out this truck. All right, so I guess the best place to start would be on the front, so let's take a look at all the new equipment. As you can see, it got some Grover emergency horns down there. I actually got those from Log Cabin, so they bolted right onto the original brackets and everything fit pretty well, and I got that all hooked up and working. So you'll get to hear all this stuff here in a little bit. And I also found a little siren. It's not quite a Q siren, but this little thing sure does make a lot of noise and it has a very, very unique sound. So I'll make sure that you can hear this here in just a little bit. Of course, I got that piston intake valve on there so we can actually pump from the tank. And if we look on top, remember last time we were missing a cab light. So right there, I found that original lens from 1979 so it blends in real well with all the originals. So I got another cab light up there where it's supposed to be. So now when I go get my uh, CDL or whatever, I can actually use this truck and they won't gripe about it because something's cracked, damaged, missing, or broken. Not anymore. All right, now that federal signal light bar up there, uh, the sun is glaring on it. Let me move back this way. I got it all working, so all the original lights are working. And I fixed the wiring on that. And as a matter of fact, I got a digital siren. So we can actually use that speaker right there in the middle. There are 200 watt speakers in there, so that allow me to make quite a bit of racket. Uh, as if all of this stuff down here isn't enough. So the front of the truck does look pretty good. I got the paint corrected. I got the sirens and the horns mounted on there. And uh, the electronic siren does work. The pump panel is operational and everything is ready to go. So now we'll go take a look at the crosslays and see what there is to see over there. So moving on to this side of the apparatus, as you can see, there's quite a bit more equipment there than there was in the last video. So right here, I got my one and three quarter inch crosslays going. I got two color coded hoses in there in a couple sections hooked together. So that seems to do pretty well. I didn't put any dog ears on there because I really haven't needed it. But other than that, that's all filled up and ready to go. And I got a couple nozzles up inside there. I don't think you can really see it. But I got a couple task force tips in there. And then of course, each one has its own valve on the other side, but then Maddie Dale 2 has a valve here. So you can stretch your hose out and then pull the valve on this side. And you should be good to go. So at least you don't have to run around the apparatus to get to the other valve. Now, up top, I've got the big gun right there on top. I got a new monitor. It's actually a four and a half inch discharge monitor, but I only had a adapter. So I had to use two and a half on the nozzle, but that works really well. Actually, that nozzle pumps out quite a bit of volume and it'll drown a typical fire that we would respond to so that's a uh, for our application that'll have to work but I would really love to have a big old four and a half inch nozzle but I think that would drain the tank a little too fast because I've only got one two and a half inch supply line right there and that's it so it taps right off the fire main and goes underneath this fire body so for our application that'll work that monitor is really too big to go up there but it does work just fine Drains the tank pretty quick, but it works just fine. It also looks pretty cool sitting up on top. As you can see, that monitor really makes a stand on top of that truck. So let's go look at the other side. I got something pretty neat to show you over there. So let's take a look at this side of the truck and see what we got going on. So the first thing you'll probably notice is that I got rid of those dinky little fire extinguishers and put proper water cans on there. The brackets are already there for them, but Honestly, if you're showing up in an apparatus this big, you won't be needing those water cans. Now right here on the side, you'll notice there's missing a cage. There's a metal cage that holds a device. I can't think of the proper name of it at the moment, but that is a cage right there. It has hinges on the bottom and it flips down. It's basically a kiddie pool on the inside that you fill up with water. And that allows another apparatus to draft from, say you're not near a pond or something, you can fold that cage down, extract it, set it up, and then you can draft another apparatus if you have a tanker coming in there to dump water. So this one does have a tank dump on there. 
but it also has a big pump so you really this is a pretty capable apparatus now I've also got some SCBA gear up here so let's take a look at that as you can see I got a composite tank right there and then a steel tank up there now these are all low pressure they're only like 2500 something like that so low pressure SCBAs and then you got another one here and that's a Scott air pack so that's a little older one it kind of goes with the time frame of this truck so I keep it right there now what's pretty cool about these seats is when you're in your bunker gear and you got that SCBA on you just clip right into the back it's got brackets just like this and so you clip yourself in there and ride along and once you get to the fire scene you just jump out and it'll release you and out you go oh and let's take a look at that hose I've got some of this too so on the back of the truck or on top actually on the fire bed all this hose will have to go on there so we'll look at that here in the end but I want to show you what I've done to the back of the truck on the tailboard and you'll see it's all pretty nice now I got rid of all the rust so let's take a look at that so last but not least I wanted to show you the back of this truck and what all I've done there as you can see it is bright as can be last time there was a whole lot of dents in the bumper there was a lot of rust covering most surfaces so I got all of that replaced and everything nice and neat and as you can see there is no more rust and man this thing really hurts your eyes when you're looking at it it's just bright as can possibly be so we'll take a look there I got a nozzle that one I think is a 750 GPM it might be a thousand I'm not sure but it goes on the end of that monitor that one is a three and a half and then I have a two and a half that'll go with it of course I got some spanners there finally two and a half inch discharge and a little one and a half and I got all the rest of the lights working on the bottom so now all that stuff works and of course you got a tank dump right there so you can pull that and release all your tank water rather rapidly now there is just one problem here on the back that is an is that an original yep that's an original gauge as you can see it says Ferrar on there Ferrar company incorporated they do tend to leak oil out so that's going to mess up the paint and stuff eventually that one's leaked about all its oil out and then this one was replaced it's class one and it's about halfway leaked out too so I don't know what it is with these oil filled gauges they all tend to leak but oh well we can just keep on replacing them hopefully they'll last a number of years or at least the newer ones now all that two and a half inch hose or two and three quarter inch will go up here so if I raise you guys up there you can kind of see what goes on since I don't have any supply hose I'll have to stretch out all that two and a half up there and then hopefully I'll get some supply hose on the other side and then of course that six inch hard sleeve goes there and that's pretty much it everything on this apparatus is functional you got all the emergency lighting working got it registered inspected all that stuff so it's ready to hit the road and as I said it is back in service at the moment everything's looking pretty good so I managed to dig up a whole lot of this two and a half inch hose right here and I'm gonna have to put that up on the hose bed I started replacing the wood up there so I'll get all new wood cover up that tank so it doesn't get UV damage and hopefully I'll get all this hose tested uh, cleaned dried and then put back on the truck so I do have a compartment full of good yellow hose um, the best ones I put on the apparatus itself in the compartments and then the rest of this stuff is miscellaneous hose will go on top of the hose bed now that's quite a bit that'll get me by for a little while but like I said hopefully I can get some supply hose and then we'll be in business so let's wait till it gets dark and then we'll test the emergency lightings and I'll let you hear the sirens. All right guys, it is about that time. It's gotten dark so I'm going to go ahead and do the filming on the sirens and then I will show you the emergency lights. So let's start out with that little bitty siren over there and then we'll go from there.
from the front, everything's looking all right. As you can see, you got these lights right here that alternate, so those are pretty neat. Sometimes that relay gets a little sticky and it doesn't want to alternate, right? So I'm gonna have to replace that. See, as you can see, it's sticking. Every once in a while, it'll stick, but it alternates side to side and on the bumper too. And then we got a federal signal rotator up there looking pretty good. I replaced all the wiring in it and everything, got the speakers working, so that looks pretty darn good. Hazards and everything work fine. Everything up front except for that relay on the cab, so we'll be taking care of that in the next video. Then on the sides, you can see there is one of the sweep lights. And there's another one right there, but it's not working at the moment. So we got a couple Xenon strobes in the back. I really like those strobes. Uh, most everybody I know hates them, but I think they're pretty darn cool. And they're alternating too, so even better. So when I get over here to the back, you can kind of see. Hopefully the camera will pick it up. But they alternate side to side, and sometimes they don't really pick up on camera, but that's pretty cool right there. And of course you got these here in the back, so that's all there is to it there. There's really not too many lights on this thing, but there's sure enough. And when you look around, it makes a really cool pattern. So most fire trucks don't do that anymore. If you just take a look around at the trees, man, that's cool. So that's it right there. Emergency lighting works. Sirens work. And the pump sure works just fine. And there you go, there's a functional apparatus.